recording in. Okay, so we'll open this up for questions. Mm -hmm. So if you can, um, if you would like to unmute yourself or note in the chat, um, if you have any questions, you can type it in there. We can read it for you. We'll, um, we'll pass those questions along. So Catherine, thank you very much for, mm -hmm. for sharing um, an insight on this book with us tonight. Uh, it's very fascinating. So the Warm Springs is located right near, um, you said it's about it's an hour. About, about an hour, hour and some change beyond, beyond Atlanta. Um, and it's where the Little White House is, also where they still have a rehabilitation uh, facility there, but it's mostly, it's run by the state of Georgia and it's mostly used for people who have um, mental handicaps. They'll, it's for high functioning people who need help learning to drive and, and it's, uh, it's run by the Vocational Rehabilitation Department of the state of Georgia. So um, it, the pool is still there, but it's, it's no longer used. Um, you can walk down into it. They've got a, a fountain where you can feel the, the warm water and they've got some really interesting displays, but um, the pool is, not long, is no longer used. Um, the little White House itself is maintained by the Department of Parks in Georgia, and it's just perfectly preserved just the way it was when FDR died there in 1945, including the toilet paper that was on the rolls that day. And it's kind of funny, people were sneaking in and stealing pieces of toilet paper as souvenirs, so they finally put a wire around the two rolls of toilet paper in FDR's bathroom in Missy's, so nobody would steal any more toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's funny. Yeah. It's just really icky, crepey pink toilet paper too. Ooh. So <laughs> far cry from our uh, yeah. Charmin that's today. Interesting for why people would steal that. <laughs> so, yeah, and people steal anything for a souvenir, you know. <laughs> uh, but it's a wonderful time, place to go there. They have a lovely museum, a very um, nice interactive museum. And um, things like FDR's bathing suit and his braces are on display. And as, as you just get a, a really uh, wonderful feeling about what they call the Warm Spring Spirit there and um, how much fun FDR made it for the polio patients. And that was, you know, the big thing he gave them was hope. Um, eventually, they had a, a very fine staff of of orthopedic surgeons because the, the water therapy helped some, but mostly it was the surgery they developed to um, to help people who had had, had um, deformities as a result of the polio, and they had an excellent brace shop and that kind of thing. So um, I've met a number of people who were actually patients at Warm Springs or were patients of doctors who were trained there. So. It was a, a crucial place. The other thing, of course, is that the March of Dimes, the National Foundation for Infantile Paralysis, completely funded the research for the vaccine. Um, it was not done by the government. It was done by the March of Dimes and just people making little donations. Um, the Mother's March, where people would go door to door collecting money and, and things like that. And that is why FDR is on the dime is because of the March of Dimes. He was put on it um, a year after his death and they announced the, um, the sock vaccine on um, March 12th, April 12th, 1955, which was exactly 10 years after his death at Warm Springs. Catherine, thanks so much for, your, for telling this story. This is fascinating. I can't wait to read your book. And yeah, thanks. I was curious about um, your journey and how you, and it started to become interested in uh -huh. Well, it's really, it's, it's really a rotary story um, in some ways. Um, my grandfather was uh, just revered FDR because of, he had been a young father during the Depression and, and felt that the New Deal really improved his life tremendously. I mean, they were living on credit at the grocery store, so sure it did. Um, but also, i I found FDR a very inspiring figure to me when I had breast cancer when I was 44. And um, just his, his, the only thing you have to fear is fear itself really became my mantra. It was because that you're so frightened when you have cancer or any other major illness, as some of you may know. And the fear that he had when he had polio and was paralyzed, um, I felt a real identification with that. So I started reading more and more about FDR. I got real involved in Polio Plus then. I felt that that, that was my way to pay him back for 
what he had done for me. And the more I read about him, the more this, I just kept noticing this woman, Marguerite Lahand, who was just right at his right hand and right shoulder. And I thought, God, what a fascinating job she must have had. I would love to have been Marguerite Lahand. And failing that, I'd love to read her biography. And I discovered no one had ever written one. So I decided to do it myself, and it really began with a trip to Warm Springs. I visited with the archivist there, and he um, was extremely helpful. He found uh, Missy's medical documents, and um, that really started turning the story on its head because she had always been portrayed by other historians, including some very major heavy hitters, as this poor secretary who was in love with FDR and had a nervous breakdown every few years because she realized, you know, she could never have him as her own and it just kind of sad or else she was the in-house mistress. And what I found with these records was that the, the damage to her heart that had been caused by her rheumatic fever and the treatment they gave her was digitalis to regulate her heartbeat. She had toxic reactions to it that mimicked a nervous breakdown, but that was what was happening to her over and over again. So it really told me there was a whole new story here. And what I discovered was her power and how important she was and influential and how highly respected. Um, the archivist at Warm Springs also put me in touch with her great nieces who had just a huge archive of papers that had not been used before. And they were very eager to have Missy's story told and uh, were really happy to cooperate with me on that. So it all just kind of snowballed along until I lucked into a, a good New York agent and a, a really good publisher. That's amazing. Yeah, it's, it's quite a story. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, and Catherine, you had mentioned um, uh, a couple months back. Is this in? Was this uh, an article that, or did you have another article in regards to, um, to this book in the Rotarian magazine? Yeah, when you get your Rotarian and about. Probably about a week, I guess. I think it hits mailboxes in mid-December. I'm going to be the, the talent at the table um, subject. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so I'm really excited about that. Um, I, have, uh, I have been working with another author from Georgia who's written a book uh, called A President in Our Midst about FDR in Georgia. So just a beautiful coffee table book full of pictures. We have been trying very hard to get some you know, opportunity to speak or have a presence or do a breakout session or something at the Rotary National Conven International Convention and it just not made any headway at all. So I think what we're planning to do is, is focus our, our time um, during the convention in Warm Springs. And I hope that some Rotarians will come down on, on tours. I know they're trying to organize bus tours. It would just be such a wonderful thing for Rotarians to see where the polio fight really began. Um, I went to Warm Springs a few weeks ago and did a whole presentation dressed as Missy and speaking as Missy with a, with a Boston accent. I don't know that she has such a heavy accent, but I can either do Southern or I can do Boston and that's about it. So that's what I did and I uh, had such a good time. So it, that was, that's what I would like to do again is to, to go as Missy and, um, and speak down there. <laughs> well, awesome. I hope, you're, I hope you get a chance to do that. Yeah. Um, um, I, you know, I mentioned to Eve, when I spoke at um, Quail Ridge Books, I left behind a lot of signed copies of my book, but if you'd like to get one from any other source like Amazon or whatever, um, just go to my Missy Lahan Facebook page and send me your address and I'll mail you a signed book plate that you can stick in your book. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, I'm sharing on our screen. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for speaking with us this evening. This was a fascinating program, and I'm glad we got a chance to hear about your book and about Missy Lahan. And on behalf of our e-club, um, here's a certificate of appreciation for <laughs> sharing and being our guest speaker tonight. Um, uh, I know that um, this was very, very um insightful and uh, with the Rotary Foundation um, and a hundredth centennial anniversary uh -huh. I hope that it will be a successful event um, 
in Atlanta that we'll be able to, you know, you'll be able yeah. to share your story yeah. and Missy's story um, yeah. in Atlanta as well. So thank, thank you so much. This was, this was really fun. <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it. Okay. So, 